Welcome into Johnson Haygood Stadium in Charleston, South Carolina. We're in the midst of the first quarter of the battle between the Georgia Southern Eagles and the Citadel Bulldogs. The Georgia Southern Eagles have a 7-0 lead with 8.15 to go, along with Chip Tarkington and Ted Byrne on Dave Weekly. Short end over end kick. Corey Harris will get away from the football and it will roll dead at the 32 yard line and that's where the Citadel will have it first and 10. So for those of you who have just joined us from the Marshall Appalachian League down in Boone, the Citadel Bulldogs have managed practically nothing offensively, Chip. The only score in this ball game to this point, a 21-yard touchdown run by Roderick Russell for the Georgia Southern Eagles. In the Citadel's first two possessions, they have not been able to do anything. It's been three and out both times. And, of course, as you mentioned, Georgia Southern scored on their first possession to take the 7-0 lead. First and 10 for the Bulldogs at the 32-yard line. Meyer is going to follow it into the hole. That's a good looking play on first down. That's a gain of nearly eight Myers Myers. On the keeper. Second down and two. You know, we're going to see two quarterbacks today for the Bulldogs as we take a look at the Southern Conference standings. And these are updated. Mm -hmm. Marshall at 4 0, and East Tennessee State now 5 0. East Tennessee State a winner over Furman this afternoon. So. Marshall and East Tennessee, those teams have yet to meet. That'll be a game coming up in the Mini Dome in Johnson City. Should be quite a battle. Second down and two. Myers with the handoff. And he will not pick up the first down. In fact, the ball carrier, Deion Jackson, was lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage. The middle of that Georgia Southern 4-3 defense shut him down. Lee Brooks and Ezekiel Roberts taking care of business at the tackle spots. Central trying to run behind their big center, Sean Lyons, who's a big hoss. And he's got a chance to play pro football, everybody around here thinks. He's a big, big man. Up there, trying to run behind him as much as they can, but so far the Southern defense has managed to move around him to make some stops. Yeah, he's a standout in that offensive line, but frankly, They've had some problems on the offensive line at the Citadel this season. And that's Stanley Myers spinning his way across the 43-yard line. Looks like he's got a first down. And if it is a first down, it will be the first for the Bulldogs this afternoon. It may be close enough to measure. Chip, you made a good point early in, the, in this ball game about these two teams offensively are mere images of each other. I mean, it's one thing when a, a team has to prepare for an option attack once, possibly twice a season, but these guys know what they're doing as far as option football. It's assignment football. They know how to defense it. Yeah, both coaches said it's a lot easier for the defenses this week to prepare for the game, and it's going to be a first down. He's got it by about half the football there. But both teams look at each other during practice so it should help out both defenses and both defenses have had some tough times during the year some periods where they just have had some breakdowns which really helped and I think we've noticed that a lot in this first quarter even though Georgia Southern scored on their first possession their second possession they didn't go anywhere so I think it's helped both defenses but you can see the offense is trying to do some different things so trying to throw the ball a little more there's some change-ups that they're trying to throw at the other team both teams score a lot of points Georgia Southern's putting up 31 a game the Citadel Bulldogs scoring 30 but the way these defenses know the option attack this might be a low scoring game the flip out of the backfield Myers is able to get it to the freshman Jackson and Jackson crosses the 45 yard line but not much more maybe a gain of four it'll be second down and six that's a good play on first down it's an outstanding play you pick up four yards you get the back out of the backfield where he's got a linebacker covering most of the time and he's got out in the open field and do something with the football Jackson's good in the open field makes it a little easier on second down instead of second and ten so do the Bulldogs have two outstanding quarterbacks, Stanley Myers, the sophomore, and then P.J. Stewart has really been turning some heads. We'll see him a little bit later on. Jackson to midfield, and he is rudely thrown back once he reaches the midfield strike. It's a gain of four yards. It'll be third down and two, and for the first time this afternoon, the Citadel is making things happen offensively. Well, I think they see what they want to do now. They're trying to somewhat get away from their option, but if you, if you notice closely what they're trying to do, all of this is spinning off of what they can do out of an option. The last little pass could have come off option. This was a little draw play using the tailback. That could be coming off an option. So they're trying to use what they do, but vary it just a little bit. Webb is into the ball game as a wide receiver for the first time. And this is Kenyatta Sproul, and Sproul the fullback across the 45, down to the 44-yard line into Georgia Southern Territory. Pick up the first down. 
Sproul, the junior from Ritter, South Carolina. So they kind of surprised everybody running that play because they ran away from the strength and went back to the other side and just quick hitter. A lot of times a quick hitter when you're running this kind of offense will work. You know, we're going to have a lot of fun. This is really going to be a clinic today on option football, the pros and cons of it. And it's Sproul once again, and he is brought down shy of the Georgia Southern 40-yard line. This is a... Uh, the kind of drive, ideally, that the Citadel Bulldogs want to have. They're grinding things out. They're possessing the football. They're taking time off the clock. They're shortening the game, and they're keeping that explosive Georgia Southern ground game off the field. Well, last week against Furman, one of the strangest games Don Powers has ever been involved in. The Citadel had 31 more offensive plays, had the ball for 14 minutes more, and lost the football game. Usually when you do those two things right, you win. Yeah, and they had a huge edge in, in total yards in that game, 450 to 300. Stanley Myers had a head of steam, and he was going for the sticks, but he is brought down shy of the first down marker. It's going to be third down and three. Chris Wilson for Georgia Southern made an outstanding play there. He was the last man left for Georgia Southern, and he's playing defense on the quarterback and the pitch man at that time. He made a great play because that play could have been a big, big gain for the Citadel. When you're talking about the defense for the Georgia Southern Eagles, keep your eye on big 97, Edward Thomas. In the middle, he's the middle linebacker, but sometimes he'll line up as a defensive end. He'll line up anywhere, anywhere. on the field. <laughs> he's tough. Stanley Myers, the handoff right up the middle. That's Spruill, and Spruill is very close to a first down. Now that's the bread and butter. That's where they want to go. We may see the chains again, but that, that's exactly what the Citadel wants to be able to do. And by doing some of the other things offensively, they can come back to that and run behind their strength, which is the big interior line. We talked about the keys early in the game, and for those just joining us, we talked about these keys. Georgia Southern had to avoid the turnovers that have shot them in the foot all year, establish a balanced attack of throwing and running the football. The Citadel needed to score early. They're trying to do that now and to break that bone out of the uh, Georgia Southern folks. Citadel Bulldogs just two and four coming in to play this afternoon, but they've got three straight losses against nationally ranked teams. Fourth down, I think they've got the first down. It's Deion Jackson. Once again, that offensive line coming off the ball. They're just trying to just bunch it in there and get that, that just a little less than a yard to go, not far at all. And they managed to just blow them off the line far enough. And you'll see Deion Jackson spinning and trying to get anything he can just to make any more ounce of yardage, trying to make sure he gets that first down. Boy, number 36, Corey Brown, the junior fullback from Winnebow, North Carolina, led Jackson into the hole and just took care of business, and they picked up the first down easily. Nothing flashy there. Just line up and run it right at you. First down and 10. The Bulldogs at the Georgia Southern 32-yard line. Play action for Myers. Stepping up and trying to step out. Takes it to the 30-yard line. That's a gain of three. And boy, you could tell the, the bookends at defensive end for the Georgia Southern Eagles really closed that pocket really quickly. Tony Robinson and Derek Reeves were in there very, very fast, and Myers had no choice but to run up into the pocket and carry the football. And, and they better be glad that they did because Mark Parson had broken open on the left side of the field, and if Myers has another half second, it's, it's touchdown city because Parson had broken wide open on the left side of the field. One of the reasons they decided to go away from the wishbone into a more multiple option look was the development of Myers as a passer. And now we have flags down on the field. Throwing the football is really not his primary skill. He's more of a running quarterback, an option quarterback. He was recruited as an option quarterback, but he's really developed into a fine passer. Well, and that's important if you're gonna if you're gonna change Before your offense snap, some, and you need start. to be just a offense, little bit, second down. a little bit varied in your offense. Call penalty against. The Citadel, that'll back them up, and that may make second down. That'll change your call, probably. But if they're going to diversify the offense, it's imperative for, for Myers to be able to do some different things. Like you said, he, he is a threat when he has the football every moment. He can go 80 yards at any time. So they bring the wide receivers into the game. Coming off the bench, Derek Green, Reuben Gresham is in there, along with Carlos Frank. And here's Myers on the move, rolling right, running, throwing. Frank's got it to the 20-yard line and another first down. Great call 
there by the center line. And the thing I like the most about this play is by bringing Myers and rolling him this way, he could have run the football as well as throw the football. Frank makes a nice catch, makes a nice run with it. It's a big first down. If you can do stuff like this, it makes it awfully tough to play defense. Look at him when he comes out here. He could run this football if he has to, but he gets the pass. Nice completion, nice big first down. We're inside of a minute to go in a quickly played first period. The Bulldogs have the football, the nose of it, just outside the red zone. First and 10 for the Citadel at the 21-yard line. Kenyatta Sproul puts his head down and bangs his way down near the 16-yard line on first down for a gain of nearly four. Talked about the throw in Myers is four of six, 21 yards. Of course, a lot of that coming on the last play. But if you can do some of that as well as run the football, you're going to cause some problems. Stanley Myers passed for a career high 154 yards last week for the Bulldogs. That was a tough loss you mentioned where they dominated the stats at Furman, uh, but they ended up losers in Greenville. Myers keeps it late pitch Jackson fighting his way down to the 10 yard line and he's close to another Citadel for a down. Boy, that is the exact way you run the option play. Myers held onto the football as long as he possibly could, made the late pitch, and you get a first down out of it. That's great football. We've come to the end of the first quarter at Johnson Haygood Stadium in Charleston, South Carolina. Georgia Southern has the lead, but the Citadel Bulldogs are driving. Georgia Southern leads the Citadel 7-0 as we begin the second period, but the Citadel Bulldogs are in the midst of a long time consuming drive. The next play will be number 14 in this drive, Chip, and the Citadel Bulldogs looked rather inept on their first two possessions, but in their third possession of the ball game, they have definitely clicked. Well, they're finding out exactly what they want to do now, and it's clicking. All cylinders are hitting on high gear, and, and they have really had an impressive drive here. This has been some 60-yard drive already. They can get in the end zone with a touchdown down here the complexity of this football game changes quite a bit it's third down and less than a yard the football resting just inside the 11 yard line Georgia Southern at three and four two and three in the league trying to shut the door if they can and Sproul has got the first down can you know Sproul cracks across the 10 down to the nine possibly the eight yard line it's first and goal for the Citadel Bulldogs. Well, no surprise there. The strength of the Citadel football team is its offensive line. And on a short situation, third and short, fourth and short, possibly, they're going to line right up and run straight ahead. You probably won't see a lot fancy out of them because that's their strength. Run right ahead, straight ahead. You talked about Sean Lyons. He's a fine example of what's right with college football. He's one of three graduate students on the Citadel football team. Already has his degree in civil engineering, one of the best centers in 1AA football. Meyer the pitch Jackson trying to get to the outside good open field tackle as he is dragged down at the seven yard line that's fine defense by Kasi Harvey yeah he did make a good play he fall off a block and managed to bring down Jackson or Jackson gets in the end zone here it comes right at you it's gonna run into your living room you better duck here Jackson coming right at you but look at there nice play there that's the way that you have to stop the option Second down and goal. Working from the left hash, Myers takes it across the five and down to the four-yard line. And so the Bulldogs creep ever closer to the goal line. Boy, I really like the way that play sets up. They fake it in there to the big back sprule, and then they have an inside back that comes in to seal off the hole back behind where Sproul's going, and you got a little alleyway for Myers to run in there. They've run that play a couple of times, and Myers has come close to breaking both of them. He almost got in the end zone with that one, too. What a terrific drive this has been for the Bulldogs. The Citadel does not want to settle for a field goal. They need the touchdown. Myers, pitch, Jackson, touchdown. Dion Jackson takes the pitch on a beautifully executed option play by Stanley Myers. And the Citadel Bulldogs can tie the game with the upcoming extra point. Take a look at it. Nothing but green in front of him. Georgia Southern bunched it in, trying to stop a straight ahead. Gets in the end zone. They went four of seven on third down conversions on that drive.
drive, David. That's impressive. That's very impressive. Justin Skinner is on to add the extra point. And we're tied at seven. Southern Conference football on Sports South is brought to you by the city of Greensboro, North Carolina. By Interstate Johnson Lane. Reebok. And by U.S. Air. 13-19 to go. Game tied at seven. Chip, what an unbelievable <laughs> drive. 18 plays, 67 yards, took nearly 10 minutes off the clock. Yeah, 944 to be exact, but hey, you may as well call it 10. That is exactly what we said the Citadel had to do to stay in the football game. And uh, they're in it right now. If you're Georgia Southern, that changes things around a little bit. May change your offense. They may come out and put the ball in the air a little bit now. Back to receive the kick for Georgia Southern. Corey Joyner and Earthwind Moreland. And it's Joyner trying to get outside. Across the 20, flag is down, and he takes it down to the 24-yard line. Looks like we got a clip or hitting in the back to me from up here, but I wanted Earthwind to get the football. I, I hate to tell you, but I really did. Oh, we're looking forward to possibly seeing him sometime in this ball game. Earthwind Moreland has one of the best names in college football, no doubt about if it. If he scores a touchdown, you know it's going to be Earthwind fired at the touchdown. There's no <laughs> question. And Georgia Southern's fans I really got a taste of what that young man was all about. He had a terrific spring football game. In fact, Georgia Southern's very excited about their recruiting class. Here's another look at the clip. Yep, there it is. And you can see they made the, made the call coming. It was right there. There it is right there. That's the one that they called. On a return. Blocking the back. First down. Yeah, blocking the back now. Look at here. You have the Citadel defense. You've got Georgia Southern deep and all. This is a, an important part of the football game for Georgia Southern. They've got to get something going again because the momentum has swung to the other side of the field. Well, 10 minute drive will do that to you. Surely will. Especially when it ties the game. First down and 10 for Georgia Southern. Robinson. And he can't get rid of the football. He wanted to get it to Joyner, but he couldn't do it. Terrific defense, Lorenzo Jackson, the junior from Hartsville, South Carolina. He had the quarterback, and he really had the quarterback. No question, he made a great, great play. I mean, this is outstanding football. Take a look, comes out, voids the block, and makes the stop. It's imperative against an option team. You cannot be blocked. You cannot get knocked off your feet. If you can stay on your feet and keep moving and stringing the offense out, you can make a play. That's a big loss of five, and now the line of scrimmage is the four. Hand off right up the middle. Roderick Russell has got ahead of steam, got the first down, and more. 40-yard line. What a run. Terrific run by Roderick Russell. That's a 41-yard game. And you know where it starts, right at the line of scrimmage. Outstanding blocking at the point of attack. Take a look at this right here. This is a wonderful little trap play. 67 comes with nobody to block. It's that wide open. And then some outstanding open field running. That's, that's beautiful. I mean, it doesn't get any better than that. Unofficially, we've got Roderick Russell at 72 yards rushing in the first half. First and 10 at the 46-yard line. And it's Russell again. Keep riding that horse down to the 49-yard line. It's a gain of three. So I guess you could say that Georgia Southern is out from under the shadow of their own end zone. No question. And, you know, they've got some real experience across that offensive front. Jamie Glover of 67, who's the left guard. This is start number 44 out of a possible 45. You know, yeah, Chip, I'm glad you brought that up because this offensive line for Georgia Southern, kind of a unique mix. You got two seniors, right. two redshirt <laughs> freshmen, and a sophomore. And it somehow is. they blend together, and they've really done a nice job, especially running the football. Late pitch. That's Benny Cunningham. And Benny ran 
into a stone wall once he reached the 50. Corey Harris, the corner, made a nice play on this one. Once again, stringing it out. You can't let the option play get outside of you, but here's the play coming at you again. Keeps the ball, obviously the right play there. The pitch, and then look at this. You fight off the block, fight off the block. Keep stringing it outside. You want to stay outside. Don't let that man hook you so that the running back can get outside of you. You're the last contained man outside. That's exactly, exactly what Corey Harris did. That's a great play. All right, dual wide receivers this time to the left. Joiner in motion. Here comes the flip. Tut on the reverse. And the freshman Tut makes one move. And he keeps on tucking down to the 32-yard line. That's a first down. Sweet call by the offensive coordinator, Daryl Dickey. I mean, this is sweet as silk. You're going in one direction. Everybody in the world looks like student body left. And here comes Rico Tut back the other way. And nobody's home. Wide open. You know, Rico Tut missed the first three games. He had a kidney problem and had to wait on Mother Nature to help him so he could play. And look at all the blockers out here looking for people to hit. And Rico makes a nice run. Big game for Georgia Southern. Freshman from Lincolnton, Georgia. You mentioned Dickey's in a second year as the offensive coordinator at Georgia Southern, former offensive coordinator at the University of Kentucky. Yeah, former great player at Tennessee. Oh, yeah. Roderick Russell. Once again, Russell really gets into the hole quickly, and he takes it down to the 26-yard line. And that's a gain of six. That's another good play on first down. So both of these teams counterpunching, aren't they? That's exactly what it is. It's, it's great to watch offensive lines that are working well, too. Georgia Southern's offensive line right now is, is working on all cylinders again. These guys up front are moving. They're, they're full blocking. They're trapping. They're counter stuff. I mean, they're doing all kind of stuff that helps these backs get through the hole. Leading receiver for the Eagles, Maurice Bing, is split out wide to the left. This is Robinson, the lefty, going left. And there's the pitch to Joyner. It's a nice pitch inside the 20, inside the 15, down to the 14. Flag is down. This one may be coming back. Good chance it will be. Just where he dropped the flag would indicate that one. Boy, Kenny Robinson really runs that option very, very well. Here's another look. He looks like he's running downhill half the time. Look at this. The counter is the counter option where he's coming back the other way. But, David, notice how quickly he gets to the corner. Yeah. Then you got to make a decision. Somebody's got to make a decision on defense. When the back comes up, he makes the pitch, and that makes it wide open so Joyner can make the game. This one is coming back. Here's the call. Holding. Offense, second down. One thing Robinson does, and he really makes it look easy, is his, uh, his ability to pitch the football. Here's another look at the penalty at the end of the run by Joyner. We're going to see the hole right there. Well, yeah, you can, you can see that. They usually don't allow the offensive people to tackle him. Morris oh. Bean kind of got a handful of blue, but that's okay. That happens sometimes when you're trying to block Bean, trying to hustle downfield and make a block. And you just got to grab the handful. <laughs> second down and five at the 27-yard line. Russell is met solidly in the middle of the line. And down at the bottom of the pile is Belcher. You know, the great thing about these two offenses, if you really start looking at it closely, is how many variations you see from the old triple option that came out years and years and years ago. Look at all the different plays we're seeing off of them. They're running the counters. They're running sweeps. They're running pitches here. This is when it's fun. You don't know what's coming at you. One bugaboo for Georgia Southern this season. They've had a tendency at times to not take care of the football. In fact, they had five fumbles in the first 16 minutes of their game at Western Carolina, a game that they eventually won. They, they really want to stay away from the turnovers. And too much time. Boy, now that, that will make coaches get whiteheaded when you have third and three and a half, four yards to go, and then you get a delay a game. Offense, third down. Just like the man in the white head said, delay a game. That'll, that'll give you gray hair in a hurry. That really, really will upset you because you're down close enough to where you're thinking, hey, if we don't make a first down, we pick up a couple. Yeah. We got a fourth and two, and Georgia Southern's converted 10 of 19 fourth downs this year. So you're thinking we're in good shape here, but then all of a sudden now you're back and you got a third and eight and a half, nine to go. That changes everything. Third and eight. Line of scrimmage now with 30. Robinson. Good protection, lets it fly, 
pass is caught at the 11 yard line. What a grab by Rico Tut. Good garden seeds. He jumped out of his shoes to make that catch. Outstanding catch by Rico Tut. That freshman, he's an athlete. Take a look at this again. I mean, he is really going to have to go skying to get this one. Look at that. Oh, great play. That's a big, big third down conversion. Another look at this gain of 18. And I tell you, the Ooh. pass is in a good place, too. It couldn't have been caught by anybody else. Robinson hands the football right up the middle, and it's Roderick Russell banging his way down to the six. And you can see Georgia Southern's having a lot of success, three out of four on third down conversions. Same way with the Citadel's last scoring drive. Yeah. They converted four out of seven third downs. I mean, they, you know, that's what you got to do. But you got to put yourself in first and second down where it's not a long third down to go. If you got third and ten, it's a lot harder than third and two. Well, Georgia Southern is driving for what they hope will be their second touchdown of the game. Russell across the five, down to the four-yard line. And that's Lance Gray coming over from his defensive end spot, the sophomore from Atlanta, to make the stop. Kenny Robinson really got up slowly. He was grabbed from behind, kind of rolled his leg up just a little bit, so he's up limping just a, just a hair, but it's good pursuit from the backside. And Lance Gray is going to be counted on to have a big game on the line today because Derry Myricks, the defensive end, unavailable. He re-injured a knee in, at the Furman game. Won't play today. While Georgia Southern talks over this situation, we'll step aside momentarily. Seven minutes to go till halftime. We're tied at seven. Tied at seven. Seven minutes to go till halftime. Sevens are wild. And the option game for both of these teams has been running wild here in the first half. Frank Elwood looking on. He's a pretty fine quarterback himself for Ohio State back in the 60s. Third and five. Long count for Robinson. Keeps it spinning inside the five. Touchdown, Kenny Robinson. Uh, what a great uh, move. <laughs> what a spin move. You wonder what kind of athlete he is? Oh, my. What a great. But looked like he had nowhere to go, so he spins and gets into the end zone. Don Powers can't believe that. He cannot believe it. Look at this coming right to you. Fakes it in there, keeps the ball. And look at the spin right there. My goodness. The defensive backs had over pursued just a little. He's in the end zone. Extra point is up and good by Stallnaker. And so Georgia Southern, their offense, watch the Citadel Bulldogs control the football for 10 minutes. They got the ball, put together a great drive of their own. They've got the lead. Georgia Southern's back in front of the Citadel Bulldogs, 14-7 here at Johnson A. Good Stadium in Charleston, South Carolina. And Chip, he, he gets to the end zone rather frequently. <laughs> yeah, eight touchdowns in his last four games, his 34th career touchdown. You're going to see it again. It's pretty enough for y'all to run it back four or five times. I mean, that's a great, great play. What a drive, too. You mentioned the long drives. How about 12 plays, 91 yards, and taking 618 off the clock. Georgia Southern was four of five on third down conversions. He's home calling mom. I said, hey, Mom, did you get a good look at that? How good did I look when I went in the end zone? <laughs> what a terrific option quarterback he is. Kickoff taken at the four-yard line. And this is Carlos Frank. And Frank does a good job, takes it past the 20-yard line. George Southern says they have the football, but they do not. Ted Burns down on the sidelines tonight. Ted, what's up? Well, we got with us uh, the head coach, basketball coach of the Citadel Bulldogs, Pat Dennis. And while footballs are in the air, basketballs have been bouncing. And I know you got a great season coming up as you point toward going to the conference tournament up in Greensboro. And what a nice setting that was last year. Oh, yeah, it was really a big time atmosphere. Everyone loved it up there. Our kids, we played in the, the, the big arena up there. Great crowds. It was a tremendous atmosphere. And we were really excited. And we're looking forward to going back. All right, Coach, good luck. Let's go back to the game. Thank you. All right, thank you, Ted. Thank you, Pat. He's one of the finest coaches in this neck of the woods. I'm going to tell you, Pat Dennis is an outstanding coach, and he served as an assistant coach for Dick Tarrant at Richmond for quite a few years. Got a little change of quarterback. Yeah, P.J. Stewart, we knew we'd see him. We didn't anticipate we'd see him this early. He's in the game. Freshman quarterback from Fayetteville, North Carolina. 
Well, you know why he's in. The last time the Citadel drove the ball, they needed 9.44 off the clock, so they brought in the thrower because there's only 6.15 to go in a half. You get to get a little quicker here. Boy, he has had some terrific efforts subbing for Myers. Boy, he gets the pitch out. And racing around the end, that's Aaron Green, the sophomore from Hinesville, Georgia. Boy, that's a hotbed for high school football talent. Always has been. Another good first down for the Citadel. Here we go. It look, looks like the same deal. Doesn't matter who they put in the backfield. Same kind of option, same kind of success. Nice blocking on the corner. Good first down. First down and 10. And you can see Stewart. He's been busy. I mean, he has been really <laughs> impressive in the last two games. But Don Power says there's no quarterback controversy. Stewart's the backup. And there's the handoff right up the middle of Sproul. Well, he, he's surrounded by white shirts. Let's head on back down to the field. Uh, we've got still got Pat Dennis with us. And Pat, uh, you guys have a pretty impressive schedule. You got a couple of, uh, well, you got an ACC and an SEC team coming in to play here uh, on campus. Yeah, we're really excited. There's been tremendous excitement, I think, because we have Wake Forest coming in, one of the top teams in the country in South Carolina. But at the time when we play them, could be one of the top teams. So I think everybody's excited, and I know I am, to get this thing started. Coaches, uh, as you look at the Southern Conference, so Overall, how do you think the conference has grown since you came into it? Well, I think it's grown a lot. I, I think the basketball program, they've got a lot of young coaches in it now, a lot of enthused coaches, and all the programs continue to get better every year. Coach, you've got a couple of new teams that will be coming in in a couple of years with Wofford and the College of Charleston, a cross-town rival of yours. That should really add to the basketball uh, part of the conference. Yeah, I think it'll be great, especially having the College of Charleston in town here. Wofford's up the road. UNC Greensboro, very good school out of the Big South comes in. So it's going to make basketball even tougher every year. And Mr. Tarkington told me to tell you that Richmond Spiders haven't been the same since you left. Well, I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> Coach Pat Dennis, back up to you guys. All right, Ted, thanks a lot. Boy, you know, that's a great home court advantage at the McAllister Fieldhouse for the Citadel Bulldog basketball team. 5.19 to go till halftime. Georgia Southern with a 14-7 lead. Sights. 14-7. It's because we've got a wild dune game going on here. Yeah, we surely do. Two offenses really slugging it out. Stewart chases from the pocket, tucks it, and takes it to the 34-yard line. And that's a gain of about three, and that's about as much as he could really get. Well, you know, you mentioned there's not a quarterback controversy. A lot of schools across the country are going to use it more than one quarterback. We're going back into that. I see a lot of schools across the country. I think it's a good idea. If you get one hurt, it doesn't matter then if you put somebody else in. The first unit's used to having them in there. I think it helps to have two people that can play. Yeah, but you know, you really can't find too many really successful quarterback tandems. That's true. They're trying it at Ohio State this year. We'll see what happens. But no question, Citadel's got two good quarterbacks. Short punt. And a substantial roll. And this one will roll dead at the 22 yard. We know Georgia Southern's got two also. They yes, got a they young do. man, Greg Hill, who filled in for Kenny Robinson a few weeks ago against Western Carolina, became the freshman of the week in the Southern Conference. He's a good football player. I wouldn't be surprised if we don't see him sometime during this football game. But I think, it, it, I go back to this point about, not necessarily it's two starters, but I think it's important to have a second guy that you can go to who's played with the first unit, who can play and people are comfortable with. Well, you know, if you're gonna be a successful team in one AA football to go to the national championship, you're talking about an NFL type season. You gotta play 15 games. So you really do need some quarterbacks. And, you know, just on cue, Hill's in the game. <laughs> How about that? How'd you do that? I'm pretty good every now and then. You're tough. Joyner takes the pitch, rolls around the left end, and he's near first down. You know what they say, I'd rather be lucky than good. How's lucky work? But I think this is a good time of the game to put him in right now. Greg Hill running the option, showing you that he can run the option as well. Nice pitch to Joyner, picks up a nice gain. He's close to that first down marker, but you know it's a good spot in the game right here. If you're gonna do not be careful with the football. Now we got a little, little Joyner got a little hand stinger over there. It is a first down. You mentioned Hill. What a great job he did when he filled in for a banged up Kenny Robinson right. against Western Carolina. 
with the Eagles trailing 21 10 midway in the third he had a 60 yard touchdown pass and really led them all the way back for a 38 28 victory in yeah. Cullowhee and he was runs. named the Southern Conference yeah. freshman of the week like I said yeah he had some good runs and, and definitely he should have been the player of the week that week first down and 10 from the 33 yard line Hill runs the option oh, oh. crosses the 35 yard line takes it up to the 38 and that was nearly a real big play for the Eagles. yeah no question he, he's quick he is quick as a cat and you know here's the other change when he comes into a football game he's right-handed you're looking at the left-hander all the time with Robinson in there so I mean it's just a little change of pace but look how quick he starts moving to the corner too you got to get to the corner with the option and make that man right there you got to make the back or the linebacker or whoever it is a rover back out there make a commitment Reggie Moore made the stop for the Bulldogs Hill was a highly recruited quarterback out of the Sarasota area played some big-time college football down there Good looking option quarterback Roderick Russell hits the hole in a hurry, takes it past the 45 yard line up to the 47. That's another first down and a game and 10. And five, unofficially, we got him over 100 yards. I sure do. That would put him at 102 with 11 carries. That's pretty good yards per carry average. And, it, and I tell you what, it looked like at the line of scrimmage that Greg Hill audibled and changed the play. Now, a freshman coming in and doing that, that's impressive. You know who's got, having a real easy day? The clock operator. <laughs> I mean, tech, seconds are just ticking off this clock. This is one of the fastest first halves I've ever seen. Hill, the pitch back to the 50 yard line goes Javon Sullivan. The pitch goes to First look at Sullivan. And he'll take it just inside Bulldog territory at the 48. Well, I'll tell you the start of that play, it looked like Sullivan had, had his, he was too deep, it looked like. He was too far behind, it could have pitched, you know, the quarterback could have pitched it to him, but he managed to make up the difference in a hurry, but it looked like he was way off line there, but got in back, got back in line in a hurry. Hill under center on second down and a short five. Good penetration, terrific penetration by the Bulldogs, firing through, and Quan Guest. Guest moved from the strong safety position to the outside linebacker today and he saw an opening and he went for it and he dragged down Mr. Hill for a big loss and I can guarantee in the huddle Hill will say look find him and don't let him do that again he came out of nowhere and made an outstanding play that is a huge huge play for the Citadel he nearly stripped the football as well Here's very close look. look at this nobody really lays a finger on him right there at the end he gets just a little hit but guess with a that's a that's a, that's a great play and that comes, I think, from seeing that with your offense running it at you in practice session. Rock Hill, South Carolina. Got timeout on the field. 1.58 to go in the first half. A first half that has been dominated, Chip Tarkington, by long, sustained drives by both teams. Yeah, there's the, absolutely. 9.44 for one of the scoring drives of the Citadel. and 6.18 for Georgia Southern. And, you know, now, if you're sitting there on the Georgia Southern side, you're kind of thinking, well, all right, we got third and long. We, we may ought to run the football and try to eat up a little more clock because I don't know if they're going to get a first down out of this. You're almost playing with the, with the numbers now. And good chance that the Citadel will put their young guy back in again and bring P.J. Stewart back in. There's still time for them to get back down the field and put some points on the board. There's a lot of things that can happen in this last 158. Both teams have done a fine job taking care of the football. No turnovers in this game. We played relatively uh, a penalty free game. Right. Not a lot of penalties either. It's been a very quickly played first half. Georgia Southern has the ball and a seven point lead. 14-7. And Hill wants a timeout. Well that doesn't hurt you. The clock stopped anyway. That doesn't make any difference. Because you really don't, you really don't want to have a mistake here, a fumble here, or something like you said could be a big turn. You hadn't had a fumble in the, in the first half. It could be a big turn of events if you don't get the play yeah, that friend. you want to have done and you want to make. It could be, it could be a big play here. Well, Georgia Southern won their opening game at South Carolina State, but then they really hit a hornet's nest. They went to Gainesville, and the Gators did it to them, but the Gators are doing it to everybody this year. 62-14 was the final. Then they had to go to Marshall, and Marshall is uh, flexing their muscles in their final season of one AA competition as well. They lose at UTC, but then they start turning things around a little bit. They get home. They beat a good VMI football team by 3, 20-17. They rally, win at Western Carolina. Then they lose a hard 
tiebreaker in Statesboro last week, 35-28, in a game that really, really hurt their chances of being involved in the Southern Conference championship race or possibly going to the playoffs. You know, the strangest thing about the game with Florida is that they rushed for over 300 yards. In fact, they rushed against the Steve Spurrier coach Florida team. Nobody has rushed for more yards than Georgia Southern. So that told them they definitely had an offense that could move the football. All right, we're back to action out of the shotgun, third and 11. Hill, it's a quarterback draw all the way, and it's going nowhere. Citadel, Derek Thomas, the junior from Potomac, Maryland, wraps him up, and immediately the Bulldogs call timeout because they're going to get the ball back following this punt in pretty good field position. And you Georgia Southern, you're thinking we don't want to turn over now, so you direct snap back it and just let Hill come right back up. He's got it in his hand. Don't give it to anybody else. But look at that. Look at that. Fighting through two blockers. That's that's a fine, fine, fine play there. Corey Harris is back to receive the punt. Kenny Warob is back to punt. And they may go after this one. Yeah, they might, because frankly, this has been one of the problem areas for Georgia Southern this year. They are not happy with their punting game. It has been a problem. And obviously, Don Powers knows that and knows here's a chance to make something. Dirty. I tell you, you go into a locker room and it's 14-14 or 15-14 or even 14-10, that looks a whole lot better to your folks than 14-7. It's an emotional thing. It'd be a big deal going into the locker room, a little boost, a little push. Well, you know, when these two teams get back to the locker room, Chip, I don't think there's going to be too many offensive adjustments, but there's going to be plenty of defensive ones. Well, the thing to keep in mind is that Georgia Southern scores 60% of their points are about that in the second half. Right. That's something to keep in mind done that all this year and they've all also done it pretty much all of their past yeah but third quarter has been really a, a difficult period for the citadel they've scored only six points all season in the third quarter on two field goals haven't scored a touchdown in the third all year or got a good punt away and a fair catch is called for at the seven yard line by Corey Harris. Uh, he'd probably like to rethink that decision. Yeah, I think so. I think he was surprised where he wound up because, I mean, or really kicked that ball high and long. And I think he was surprised. I don't think he really knew where he was on the field when he made that fair catch because I'm like you. He probably liked that ball to bounce into the end zone. So the minute 43 to go, the freshman, P.J. Stewart, comes back out on the field and you know what Don Powers is thinking, he wants to have that freshman with the cannon out there. Exactly. But now they've got to be careful, too. They're deep in their own territory. The last thing that the Citadel can afford is to throw an interception or do something down here, make a mistake, and give Georgia Southern a chance to put more points on the board. Out of the shotgun, Stewart. It's a design quarterback draw. Not much running for the point. Solidly by Derek Austin. Came up from his linebacker spot, and the senior really put a hurting on the freshman there. Clock is running inside of 90 seconds to go. Georgia Southern with the ball and a 14-7 lead. When these two teams met last year, Georgia Southern blanked the Citadel in Statesboro 27-0. Nice safe pass, and the freshman did a good job, Carlos Frank, to get out of bounds and stop the clock. He does a lot of things well. We've watched him thus far in the game. Carlos Frank really does a lot of things well, especially to be a, a young player. He's done a lot of things well. It's just unusual to come to Charleston, South Carolina, and see the Citadel throwing the ball and seeing some terrific young wide receivers like Gresham, Frank, and Green. Green's a junior, but he'll be around next year as well. They got a host of folks to throw the football to, but even more impressive maybe be uh, that they recruited some kids who can catch the football because yeah. this is not a program that's been throwing it like you said. Nope. Third down and three from the 15 yard line. P.J. Stewart back, corner blitz coming. That's a dangerous ball and it falls harmlessly for an incomplete pass. Never saw him. I don't think P.J. ever saw that backside pressure, but he felt it when it arrived. And Clois Williams, the sophomore from Sylvester, Georgia, came untouched. Here's another look. Watch on the lower portion of your screen, number 42. This is one he may not have seen until uh, now. Uh-oh. Yeah. Look out. That was Peacock. Williams was in hot pursuit as well. Fourth down. And now with a minute to go, Georgia Southern's going to have a chance to maybe put some points on the board here late. From the 50-yard line, this is Tuck. And 
and he has a five-yard punt return. So Georgia Southern has 55 seconds to operate with. And they're going to bring Robinson back on the field. Now you have to go with the experience to run the show. Robinson will operate from the shotgun. He's got four wide receivers, and Russell is lined up as a wing. Robinson, the lefty, across the middle, complete. It's tight. He's got the first down, and he's down to the 31-yard line. Well, he doesn't play like a freshman, does he? He does not. Not at all. He's another one, another freshman that does a lot of things well. He ran a super route here, and I think you're going to be able to see it. He comes back for the football. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. If you come back to the football, it makes it a lot harder for the defense to intercept it. That's the way to run a route. Robinson. Pass is tipped. Good defense for the Bulldogs. Diedrich Reese from right here in Charleston, South Carolina, the sophomore, was able to make the defensive play. Reese got into the starting lineup when they juggled the uh, starters for the Citadel defense. Yeah, and take a look at this again. Lorenzo Jackson really coming in with some pressure, and that made Robinson probably throw it a little quicker than he wanted to. to Don, get some hands up coming in there. Don Powers liked the, the 11 he had on defense at the end of the Furman game and decided to start him in this game. Half a minute to go. Russell probably should have stepped out of bounds and does get out of bounds. A little later than you might have wanted, but he picked up four or five yards. To the Siddles trying a lot of things to get pressure on Robinson. They had a stun on the outside that time where they looped the tackle in the end, trying to get to him and, and force a, a bad pass or maybe a sack. That could, that could be a big play because you could knock Georgia Southern out of field goal range. They don't need to pick up a whole lot more yardage to try a shot to kick in a field goal. Yeah, but we mentioned it earlier in the first half. They've only kicked one in their first seven games. Well, I said try a shot. <laughs> Robinson again over the middle. In and out of the hand of his intended receiver, incomplete. Benny Cunningham had it and lost it. And now we're down to 23 seconds to go. It's third down and five. See, I told you they're going to try. Yeah, here we go. We're going to try a field goal. And this will be a 45-yard attempt, and it will come from the left hash. This is Ronnie Stalnaker. Brandon Smith is the holder. That was a good try, but off the post. So the Citadel Bulldog defense holds. You know, when that ball came out of the hold, I didn't think it had a chance. It didn't look like it was going to make it, but it, the wind is kind of swirling. Yeah. If you look straight across the flags, one direction and another direction, and he may have caught a good gust from behind because it blew it a little further than I thought it was going to go to. You know, Chip, you make a good point about the wind. Traditionally, this is a very windy place to play football. You're so close to the water. Um, the, the wind comes whipping off the water, and it's a swirling wind. Mm -hmm. Well, on both goalposts, it's going opposite directions. Stewart back to pass in and out of the hands of his intended receiver at the 38 yard line he tried to get the ball to Derek Green couldn't hold it now 11 seconds to go I really anticipated that Citadel was going to take a knee in that situation well I think Don Powers is, is thinking if you, if you hit an out route if you hit a couple of those in a hurry well you know you never know then you make them throw one deep to the end zone or you may bust one somebody may miss a tackle that's on the sidelines and run right out of bounds why not take a stab that's a fairly safe route yeah. to throw Ramon Webb comes in with the play but it better be a good one only 11 seconds to go in the first half Stewart steps up into the pocket and he's sacked brought down by Edward Thomas Thomas is having a great year in sacks. That's his ninth on the season. E.T. go home is what they're hearing there. E.T. go home. And that is the end of the first half. So Georgia Southern leads the Citadel. At the break, 14-7. Our halftime activities are next. 
Southern Conference Football and Sports South is brought to you in part by the city of Greensboro, North Carolina. By Interstate Johnson Lane. Reebok. And by U.S. Air. Frank Elwood and the Eagles of Georgia Southern back onto the field. And Georgia Southern, Chip, holds a 14-7 lead. Let's take a look at some of the first half highlights in a game that has been dominated by the offenses and long drives. Roderick Russell, a 21-yard touchdown run. That was a great drive. They only went 43 yards, five plays, all running plays, and he gave Southern a 7-0 lead in the first quarter. Nice hug by the Eagles, too. Here's the touchdown that capped a 10-minute drive by Deion Jackson. Super drive, 67 yards, 18 plays, and then we talked about this one I don't know how many times, but it's worth looking at every time. Kenny Robinson to give Georgia Southern a 14-7 lead. That drive, 12 plays, 91 yards. Wow. A, a model of offensive efficiency for both of these teams in the first half, 14-7. Let's head down to Ted Byrne. Here we are down at halftime, and we've got Coach Don Powers with us. Coach, uh, the offensive tempo of the game seems okay. Did you make any adjustments for defense for the second half? Well, we had to uh, tell you what, uh, Georgia Southern's a good option offense, and of course, I tell you, uh, we're, we're going to have to make some things, uh, some, some things happen. We made some adjustments I think will help us. Coach, uh, many thought that if you had to score quickly to get on top to kind of have the edge, do you feel like the club can make this comeback? Oh, there's no question. 14-7 uh, football game, there's a long way to go, and in fact, uh, somebody's going to take momentum here in, uh, in the third quarter, and it's going to be hard to regain it. I just hope that's us. All right, Coach, thank you very much. Coach, Don Powers of the Citadel back upstairs to you guys. All right, Ted, thanks. Outstanding job at halftime. Well, the Bulldog is on the march, <laughs> ready for a second half comeback. Hey, you know, if anybody can make defensive adjustments, it'll be Don Powers. Yeah. Twice he has been the Southern Conference Defensive Coach of the Year. First half statistics, not really anything jumps out at you. Both teams have been able to move the football. Of course, Georgia Southern with the advantage in the rushing yards, and as we mentioned, 91 of that on one drive. The total yards, a little bit deceiving there. No turnovers though the time of possession is pretty even too but it's been a pretty evenly played first half it really has and as far as some of the individual stats are concerned Roderick Russell 10 carries 102 yards and a touchdown he also ripped off a 41 yard run in the first half of action and we talked about it was a, a fairly clean played game in the first half not a lot of penalties no turnovers as far as the penalties are concerned Citadel penalized just one time for five yards Georgia Southern penalized three times for 25 yards so it's really any Everybody's game and I think Georgia Southern chip has really come in here and, and done what they wanted to do they controlled the football they they trailed in the time of possession but they have two long drives for touchdowns up on the board as we get set to begin the third quarter well I think the most important thing is this first series of the second half if Georgia Southern is able to march down the field and score another touchdown that's really going to put the monkey on the Citadel's back turn it around if the Citadel can make Georgia Southern go three and out get the football back and then get in the end zone we got a whole new ball game I mean it can be a lot of fun but this one series is going to be awfully important to both teams the Citadel Bulldogs will kick off to Georgia Southern to begin the second half of action this is the only remaining game being played in the Southern Conference today everything else has gone final East Tennessee State at the mini dome a winner over Furman in a battle of two teams that started the day unbeaten in league play the Buccaneers win 21 19 Marshall stays unbeaten in the league winning at app 24 10 UTC wins at Western 20 to 6 and the third quarter is underway and Georgia Southern's going to get good field position they'll start at their own 35 yard line and I can tell you that's not what coach Powers wanted to see happen no not at all you know that's a good looking bulldog I didn't have a chance to talk about that but that's a good looking bulldog the Citadel has well, you had some choice comments for your good friend, Pat Dennis. Oh, I missed him. I, you know, I wish he'd have come up here and said hey to us. I'm a little disappointed. He's gone to the dry look. You know, he used to have that hair grease back, looked like Pat Riley. He doesn't have that anymore. I don't know if we can change the team. The receiving team receives the ball on 35. But he's a great basketball coach and a super nice young guy. Yeah, perfect guy oh. for the perfect spot here oh, at the Citadel. I'll tell you what, he, he'll, he's going to continue to do a great job here. Now, the junior left-handed quarterback, Kenny Robinson, from Concord, North Carolina, back at the controls, and Roderick Russell back to business, breaking into the clear, deep into Citadel territory, takes it down to the 31-yard line. That's 
that's the way to start the third quarter. That is, and, and perfect execution and an absolute great time to make the call because the Citadel was guessing again. They sent a blitz. They got backside and grabbed Robinson from the backside. You're going to see it right here. So there's nobody home. It's wide open. That's exactly why he can make that big run. The safety was out of the way, and it's good night, Irene, and a long run. 33-yard gainer for Roderick Russell. And there's Russell again. Just keep riding him. Uh, across the 30, down to the 28-yard line. Now you're in a position where Georgia Southern is trying to get ahead by more than one score. Um, and that's not good if you're running an option offense if you're the Citadel Bulldogs. Well, that changes your offensive game plan quite a bit. But you see why Russell is the leading rusher, rusher for this football team. You just hand it to him, let him go. Got a little movement in the line. And he played high school football in Opelika, Alabama. They play good football over there. Whoa. Here's the call. Before the snap, false start offense. All right. In that line, I believe. So five yards will be marked off against the Eagles of Georgia Southern. I told you a little bit about what Georgia Southern has been through in the early portion of the season. The Citadel Bulldogs also or a sacrificial lamb at Miami in their opener, losing 52 to six. Then they won a home date with Richmond, followed that up with a home win with Western Carolina, then back to back to back losses, App State, Furman, and Georgia Southern. And there's just nowhere to go for Tobias Steverson, the sophomore from Woodland, Georgia, is run out of bounds, and it's a three-yard loss all the way back to the 35-yard line. Once again, another variation out of the option. Watch Robinson. He'll drop straight back and kind of bop, 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 and he's waiting for the end to commit. When the end commits and he makes the pitch. But once again, we've seen this all day long. The cornerbacks for both teams have done a great job of stringing the plays out, not letting them get outside of them. Corey Harris, we called his number quite a bit today for the Bulldogs. He's had a big game on a corner. Robinson, oh, the nice pitch inside to Joyner. And Joyner crosses the line of scrimmage and gets down to about the 28-yard line. That's a variation of the old Utah pass is yeah. really what that is. I mean, that's that's really a, just a change from, from an option play. That's the old Utah pass. Robinson looking like he's going to either sweep with it or maybe pass, and there he comes from the inside of your screen. He came all the way from the backside. Just not a lot of room out there, but still, it's, it's so much fun to watch these offenses work. A little bit of indecision by Georgia Southern. Finally, they do get the field goal team on. On. And Ronnie Stallnaker will take a crack at it. This will be a 44 yard kick. No good. Had a little bit more leg on this one than, than his attempt in the second period, but it's wide right. No good. Well, almost the same kick. 13.07 to go, third quarter. Georgia Southern misfires on a field goal, but lead by seven. Georgia Southern has the lead, but the Citadel cheerleaders still have a lot of school spirit, and we've got a lifetime to go in this game. Oh, long way to long go. Long way. All right, the Bulldogs have the football now. Following the missed field goal, line of scrimmage is the 28-yard line. Hand off right up the middle. Sproul takes it to the 30, and not much more. Give him a gain of nearly three. It'll be second down and seven. Senator would love another nine minute and 44 second drive if they could get in the end zone and tie the game up. You know, we love coming to Charleston, South Carolina. Great venue here at Johnson Haygood. This is the 49th year of football in this facility. This is a great place to watch a game. It is. It's, it's, there's something about it. a lot of character in this stadium. Myers takes it down to the 35 yard line. It's going to be third down and three. Back down to the sidelines and Ted. Coach Fred Jordan is joining me now, the head baseball coach here at the Citadel. And, of course, the Citadel having won the Southern Conference Baseball Tournament two out of the last three years. Georgia Southern won it last year. And, uh, Fred, this coming year, we got a brand-new place to play this game. Yeah, we're really excited, Ted. we got a beautiful stadium. It's state-of-the-art. Uh, we're really looking forward to getting into it in April. And the tournament has been a big success here in Charleston. And uh, I'm sure with this facility, it's even uh, going to be a bigger success. Now, this facility will be shared with the single-A baseball club here in town, the Charleston River. Dogs, right? That is correct. It's a joint venture. It's our property. Uh, their 
their construction. Uh, we have full control during our season, and during the fall, they have full control during the summer months. It's the same situation we've had at College Park for forever, so we're really looking forward to it. We've got a 3,000 square foot uh, clubhouse in the stadium for just ourselves, so uh, our players are really excited. And that's certainly got to help recruiting when you can show a young man a facility that's uh, major league capacity, right? Well, we hope so, so they can overcome my coaching, but uh, uh, you know, we feel like it'll help us. We feel like that with this facility, we can show a young man that, uh, you know, he's going to play in a primetime ballpark, and uh, Charleston supports college baseball, and uh, we're really excited about it. We think it's a great venture. It's amazing, too, that the uh, the support the community has given for the Southern Conference Tournament. Yes, it's unbelievable. You know, the, the tournament, I think, last year, well, the last three years when we've played in all four, da uh, four days and been in the championship game, uh, we've averaged about 12,000 people, so it's it's been a, a wonderful tournament, and Walt Nadzak and the committee does a great job, and uh, we just want to keep it here in Charleston. I'm sure this facility will help us. All right, Coach Fred Jordan, thank you very much. Guys, back upstairs to you. All right, thank you very much, Ted, and everybody at the Citadel, very proud of that baseball program. They think back to 1990 when they qualified for the College World Series, and the Southern Conference is very, very happy to get the winner of the tournament getting that NCAA tournament berth back. Well, I, I would say that Corey Joyner has a problem. <laughs> yeah, circle of blue. <laughs> Well, the Citadel was unable to do anything on their last possession. They kicked the ball away, and uh, the defense, though, rose to the occasion right there. That's a big, big, big-time play. That's one of the finer defensive plays we've seen from the Bulldogs today. Here's another look. Jorna gets a football, and then he gets a lot of company. But once again, the, the defense is just making the right plays. And I tell you what, number 23, Corey Harris, we have called his name and called his name and called his name. He made a fine play there, stringing it out again and helping with the pursuit on the inside to come and make the tackle. For the Citadel Bulldogs, Adrian Luster is the injured player. Now, Luster was just getting back into the action. He just returned to practice on Wednesday. Get a look at the arms on that guy. He can bench press 610 pounds. That's more than 100 pounds more than any, any of his teammates. You know how Hulk Hogan always talked about the pythons? Those are pythons, my friends. Good, those are battleship guns. Good guard. Would you want him to wrap you up? Not at all. No, sir. Not at all. Hopefully he'll get back in there very soon. All right, a loss of eight, second down and 18. And the handoff goes to Russell, and this time the Bulldog defense is waiting. Well, you got to get him before he gets going. Lance Gray stepped in and made a fine stop, and it's third down and long. And the defense may can turn the play around to help out the offense. If the offense will get the ball a little better position, the Citadel offense can move the football. They just have been very sporadic. At times, they, they move the ball well, and other times not. So this is a big play for the offense for the Citadel if the defense can make a big play here. Four wide receivers this time, and Robinson will operate out of the shotgun. Maurice Bing, who's been relatively quiet today is split out wide to the right. Robinson has good protection, sends it long the, for the aforementioned Mr. Bing, and it's incomplete at the 30-yard line. Double coverage, good coverage by the Citadel Bulldogs. That's one of those passes, too, that if, if it is picked off that Robinson throws, it's just about as good as a punt. I mean, he threw that thing, you know, 40, 50 yards in the air. It's just as good as a punt if it's intercepted. So that's a good defensive stand by the Citadel Bulldogs. And now Georgia Southern will be forced to punt the football. Kenny Warob is in to do the kicking. Carlos Frank is back to receive the kick at the 32-yard line. Good kick. Oh. Frank will take it at the 27. Trying to get outside. Spins up to the 38-yard line. And that is good starting field position for the Citadel Bulldogs. 9.38 to go in the third. Citadel trying to rally. They trail Georgia Southern by seven. Just 14 7. Georgia Southern leads the Citadel. And the Bulldog fans are out in mass for this one. Yes, they are. And that's, that's a female face in there. If you say so. I believe you. I wouldn't argue with you. First down and 10 for the Citadel Bulldogs at the 38-yard line. Hard Citadel, to tell with those hats on. It, it definitely is tough. 
from the 38. Stanley Myers. Oh, and that is a good defensive play. Lee Brooks, the senior defensive tackle, got his mitts on the quarterback and dragged him right down. Keep your eye on 44 and White. Well, once again, if you get past the point of attack, and there it is, he's past the point of attack, beats his man, he can make the play. If you get into the backfield, you get past that line of scrimmage, you can cause havoc for the option. The option's got to move upfield. you got to move forward to make the option work. Bulldogs are shuttling in wide receivers with the play. Reuben Gresham checks in, and Brown exits momentarily on second down and 11. Myers, this time turning to the right, gets the ball out to Jackson, who's on the way. Deion Jackson. Touchdown, Senator Bulldogs. 63 yards for Jackson. said it all day long if you can get to the corner and get outside containment it can be good night Irene that is exactly what happened the counter option here comes the pitch and then goodbye this will be touchdown number two he really turned on the afterburners oh, right, right here some great blocks on the corner and then just too much juice gets it into the end zone we may have a tie football game here in a second action jackson Dion jackson 63 yards on the score and this game is tied Dion jackson with an electrifying 63 yard touchdown run Midway in the third, we're all even. We're tied at 14, 8.42 to go in the third. Deion Jackson, just his second touchdown of the year, but it's a big one, Chip Tarkin. Yeah, and it's exactly what we had talked about all afternoon. If you keep the containment, if you block the outside people, and that's what happens. Look at the shoot right here. There you see the cornerback. He's nowhere to make the play, and then it's just Jackson's speed running down the sidelines, and he's going to get into the end zone. That is textbook option football for the touchdown. Harvey was trying to drag him down, but Jackson would not be denied. 63 yards. I'd like to know how fast he got down to the end zone. Man, he really turned it on when he turned the corner. Uh, you know, you see that shoot open up like that, and it looks like everything is, it looks like a red seas parting. You want to get to the end zone, and he was headed for that land of milk and honey. He didn't see anything for the goal line. And that's got these Citadel Bulldog fans at Johnson Haygood Stadium all fired up. Tut will watch it go into the end zone and touchback. Now your defense should be sky high. The Citadel has a great opportunity here. If the defense can come in and stop Georgia Southern once again and get the football back, this game can, can really, the momentum is already starting to turn. It can really turn if the defense turns it up a notch here. You know, Georgia Southern really did a good job up until last week of holding their opponents down in the second half. They'd only allowed their opponents to score 39 points in the second half in their first six games, but Appalachian put 21 on the board last week in the second half and now the Citadel Bulldogs hit for a big big play let's see how the Eagles answer first and ten from the 20-yard line Roderick Russell is the lone setback and this is going to cost Georgia Southern five Wide yards play. and we talked about it earlier in this game about the problems that the Eagles have had scoring points in the third quarter they haven't mm -hmm. scored a touchdown in the third quarter all season long oh, oh check that Bulldogs. Hmm. Well, we weren't on the field to make that call, but that's what they called. It, it, it looked like everybody was moving. On the defense, first down. But that's what the guy in the striped shirt says, so we'll go along with what he says. Now it's first and five, and that'll change everything around. But, you know, they had a good drive, David, a minute ago. It missed the field goal, but yeah. had a chance at making the field goal. So the offense hadn't stalled, just hadn't scored. Now join Aaron Russell are behind Robinson and now Joyner moves to a wing on the right side of the formation. And the handoff goes right up the middle to Russell and Russell continues to really Russell hit the, the handoff, but he's tripped up after a short gain. 
Give them a gain of three. It'll be second down and two. Good news, Adrian Lester's back in the football game. He went out a few moments ago. He's back in and appears to be going right along. He's had a couple of injuries throughout the season. I mean, he's had some to battle some injury, but he's managed to stay in there. Don Power's not happy at all about something. I don't you know, know he what may be upset about that offsides call. Still may be, yep. Russell has the first down to the 32, a gain of four, and so Georgia Southern moves the chains. Tough yards, though. They're not coming easily right now. The Sentinel has made uh, quite a few adjustments, I think, on defense uh, after they had the halftime where they have changed some things around and they've got a five-man front a lot of times instead of the four-man front. They're moving people inside and out. They've got a guy right on top of the center, as you can see. They're changing. And Russell is swarmed under moments after he gets the football. Russell on his back is Lance Gray. Gray. You know, if Roderick Russell keeps this up, he could be setting another personal best. He's got to be closing in on 140 yards rushing. He had 100 yards in the first half alone, including a 21-yard touchdown run in the first quarter that opened the scoring in this Southern Conference game. Georgia Southern 14, Citadel 14, seven and a half to go third quarter. Just a perfect late afternoon for football here in Charleston, South Carolina. Robinson across the middle. Bing's wide open. He's got a first down at the 49-yard line. That's a gain of 15. Maurice Bing, where have you been? Well, he was there on the spot then. Georgia Southern did a nice, nice thing here with the offense and what they did to open that up. Corey Joyner lined up in a slide back position on the right side, will come like he's gonna own the option, and he swings wide right. That leaves Bing open in the middle, and there he is because the corner on this side for the Citadel wasn't sure who to go get. He just hooked up, middle, first down, big game. First and 10, handoff right up the middle across the 50 down to the 48 yard line. Well, we've had some terrific players that have come through both of these fine universities and go on to, to bigger and better things. Travis Jervy still in the NFL, playing for the Green Bay Packers, probably one of the fastest men in the NFL. Yeah, very well could be. And uh, I think Tracy Ham's been in the CFL sure for is. Georgia Southern for what? About Oh, long, long time. Long time. Uh, they, when, it, when he was first running this, when it, it was a ham bone then. It yeah. wasn't a flex bone, it was a ham bone. They he were, was the guy that was running it. They were winning national championships. Robinson, little inside pitch. And that is very well defensed. Earth, wind, Moreland. Look out. 81 finally got it. But the defense was right there waiting. Reggie Moore. You know, Georgia Southern ran this play earlier in the game with Rico Tut, and it went gangbusters. This time, though, uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. Number three for the Citadel, Reggie Moore making a nice stop. He said, hey, I'm going to stay home. You're not going to catch me sleeping. Augusta Georgia Sr. said, I've been around long enough to know better than that. You're not going to sucker me on that one. Four wide receivers for Robinson on third and nine from midfield. The ball resting squarely on the 50. Pass is complete to Russell. It's a gain of five, but it's far short of the first down. Scott Belcher, the senior linebacker from Kannapolis, North Carolina, once again with the tackle. He's had a very busy game. And you can feel the momentum again starting to change. And once again, Robinson under a little pressure because they were coming in. Gist was coming in there at him, so he had to dump it maybe a little quicker than he wanted to, and Georgia Southern can't convert on the first down. Good opportunity for Warrob to try to pin Citadel back inside the 20. Let's see what happens. Another good kick. And it is taken at the eight yard line by Carlos Frank. And Frank back to the 11 and that's all. A lot of guts catching that one and running. <laughs> Usually the rule of thumb is if you're inside the 10, let it bounce. That hadn't been the case. Carlos said, hey, I'm gonna get this and try to hit north and south. Yeah, and he's not gonna call any fair catches in that situation. <laughs> So the Citadel Bulldogs are pinned back at the 11-yard line, but they have pulled even in this game. Georgia Southern led the game 7-0. Then they also had a 14-7 lead at halftime. 
Time to tell you about the Wild Dunes Resort, located on the Isle of Palms and just minutes away from historic Charleston, South Carolina. A 1,600-acre resort that features two Tom Fazio-designed golf courses, outstanding tennis facilities, two and a half miles of white sand beaches, fine dining, exceptional recreation facilities, and much more awaits you at Wild Dunes Charleston Island Resort. And we had a flag down on that punt on the other side of the field. They've been talking to both sides now, and I'm not sure what the call is. Okay, it's a hold. Oh, my. It's a hold against the Bulldogs that's going to give Georgia Southern a first down. That's huge. Whew. Well, I, the flag was really disguised because it was almost on the line of scrimmage far on the other side of the field, almost in front of the, well, in front of the Georgia Southern coaching staff, really where it was. And it was disguised, and the referees didn't say anything until very late after the play had already changed hands. In fact, both offense and defense for the teams were on the field. That's a big, big play in this game. Huge play. Now Citadel is one of the most penalized teams in the Southern Conference. Only VMI averages more penalty yards per game. Now the Citadel Bulldogs basically went through the first half with just one penalty for five yards, but that is a big one. Roderick Russell with the football, and he takes it down to the 27-yard line. Well, Georgia Southern can convert now, put some points on the board, and preferably a touchdown. That really changes things. Well, you can see when Georgia Southern got possession of the football, it just kind of took the air right out of the crowd. Russell. Roderick Russell having a great game. Still can't get him down. He glad that out of bounds stripe. He'd have been running still. See, he's impressive. Uh, he is impressive. Look, he just handed in there and let him go. They're just blocking straight ahead. That's designed just to hand the ball to him there. And he's just going, still going. He's somebody come block for me. I, you know, I'm by myself out here. Kevin Smith was trying to kick him down. <laughs> But one thing I liked about Russell on that particular run, did you see how he switched hands with the football, really taking good care of it? Russell inside the five, down to the four-yard line. That is his 20th carry of the game, and we've got him unofficially at 180 yards now. That's his third consecutive 100-yard game and the fifth 100-yard game of his career. Here we go again. And it's designed again just to block pace straight ahead and just let him run behind, look for any hole he can find and let him go. He's an offense by himself. All right, the ball resting squarely on the five. Second down and two. Long count. Robinson keeps it. And he's close to the first down marker. Brought down by Kevin Smith, the junior from Hollywood, South Carolina. Well, Georgia Southern tried to change it up just a little there. They'd run Russell, run Russell, run Russell. We'll keep it in there sometime. Let, let Robinson just keep the ball and try to run the, the triple option off of it. And Siddler wouldn't buy it. They're going to bring the chains on the field again. Yeah, this is good for the chain gang. Gives them a chance to get a little air time. They're they deserve a little air time. Looks like he's going to be just short. Great camera angle, guys. That's wonderful there. You can see just how short it is. About the length of a football to go for a first down. And not, the field goal is not even a consideration. They're nope. going for it on fourth and less than a yard. Game tied at 14. Three and a half to go, third quarter. Where do you think it's going? <laughs> I, I'd say number five is a pretty good bet. I think that's a pretty good guess. And I wouldn't be surprised to see him run behind the left guard. Big 67 over there, Jamie Glover. Robinson on the keeper. He appears to have the first down. Is a first down. First down and goal for Georgia Southern at the three yard line. They moved Russell over that time, instead of right behind the quarterback in a fullback spot. He's in that power eye position over there, just off the right guard. Robinson. Robinson, his second touchdown of the afternoon.
Can you believe it? That's four consecutive games in which he scored at least two touchdowns. Kenny Robinson, the junior quarterback, takes it home. Here's another look. Well, he is just so hard to get your hands on him. Look at this. I mean, he's just, it's just like grabbing for air because he's moving all the time, and he slides back against the grade, slides into the end zone. And they miss the extra point. Hit the upright. Well, the point after is no good by Ronnie Stallnaker, and that could be a big, big point in this game. Nevertheless, Georgia Southern has regained the lead, 20 to 17. Here's another look at the touchdown. So elusive. Nobody really gets a good shot at him anytime when he runs a football, and there he just cuts right back, gets into the land of milk and honey. Well, Stallnaker has now missed two extra points on the season. He's had a couple of meal misses on the field goals today. I tell you, both of them, he kicked pretty well from 45 yards yeah. out. He had a chance on both of them. Hit the upright with one. How, how many times you go hit the upright twice in a game? It's hard enough to hit it once. He won't be coming back to Johnson Haygood for a while. But Kenny Robinson's the story there. And that big, big holding call on that punt changed possessions. Georgia Southern was able to keep the ball and they methodically moved down the field, 13 plays and 80 yards, just over six minutes. And now it's 20 to 14, Georgia Southern has the lead back. The Eagles have never trailed. relatively short kick by Stalnicker from the six yard line it's number six Carlos Frank Frank has gone his way that's a 94 yard kickoff return by Carlos Frank This crowd isn't sky high now. You're absolutely wrong. We have mentioned Frank all day is doing a lot of things, and he showed you something that he can do right then and there. What a gorgeous kickoff return. Now the extra point attempt by the Bulldogs could put Citadel in the lead. Justin Skinner provides the margin. It's 21-20. Just a moment ago, you said Georgia Southern never trailed. Now they have. Yes. You knew it was coming. You could sense it. And moments after Georgia Southern scored their first third quarter touchdown of the season, the Citadel Bulldogs answer right back. Take a look at this, right up the gut. Some great blocking, but then look at it. He sees the little seam open up. Goodbye to the kicker, and then it's just run for the roses. And he wins that dash. Carlos Frank with 177 all-purpose yards today. He has had some kind of afternoon. Man, Earthwind had a shot. Yep. Earthwind fired, but came up empty. I knew I'd get that fire in somewhere. <laughs> That's only the second kickoff return touchdown in Georgia Southern history. The first one was David Primus against Stanford back in, or Sanford rather, 1989. That was 99 yards. This one, 94. Well, that tells you a little bit about the Georgia Southern defense That's on right. special teams, but Carlos Frank would not be denied an electrifying 94-yard kickoff return touchdown. So we seesaw back and forth. Little miscommunication on the kickoff, finally gathered in by Joyner. And he's got all kinds of trouble, and he has dropped back at the six. Well, you've heard of the crowd becoming a 12th man a lot of times. The crowd is so into it right now. They are really having an effect on this football team. The Citadel players are running on and off the field, high five 
around and jumping up and down. The fans are getting into it. They got the Boy Scouts they involved. They got the Boy Scouts involved. My gracious. They got everybody with them. Now, this is imperative for Georgia Southern. You got to answer the bell now. Or you at least have to move the football a bit. 21-20, Citadel has the lead for the first time following a 94-yard kickoff return touchdown by Carlos Frank. Kenny Robinson across the 10, dragged down at the 11-yard line, rather rudely by Lorenzo Jackson. Well, the other thing is you got to be careful now not to turn the football over. You, right. you, you're kind of in a catch-22. you got to make something happen, but you can't afford to hand the Citadel an easy one. 21-20, inside of two minutes to go in the third. Handoff right up the middle. Russell breaking tackles. Still on his feet. Has the first down. Takes it to the 25-yard line. That's a big-time 13-yard run. Boy, it really, and, and most of that is his effort right there just to make something happen and to keep trudging and to keep going forward and to keep battling. And that is exactly what he has done. Here we go again, coming straight at you. You see the guard folding behind the center, and then it's just Russell going and going and going. He cuts all the way back to the other side of the field, trying to find somewhere to run or just running over somebody. Roderick Russell having a career afternoon. Lorenzo Jackson shaking up on that last play, being attended to. Boy, have we seen some big plays in this game? This game's had it all. I mean, it's, it's been a great football game. I think a lot of people are surprised at just how close it's been. We've seen a little of everything. That's a good sign when you see a young man that gets up and comes off the field under his own power. You can see he's played hard all day. If you got that dirt all over your body and all over the uniform and the helmet there, you played. He's played today. He's had a great game. It Hopefully looks he like, get back in. It looks like he will be back in. It's a first down. Other scores today, Marshall wins at Appalachian. They stay unbeaten in the league. East Tennessee State wins over Furman. Robinson with the 360 and he's corkscrewed into the ground Kevin Smith the free safety came up and made the stop after a gain of possibly a half yard Robinson had nowhere to go there the pitch man was covered he's covered you got to take it yourself you can't afford to pitch it there's where the mistake can happen and, and here you'll see it when he does the counter option coming back the other way there's nowhere for him to go you can't pitch it to somebody that's covered and there's the stop right there to pass across the middle. Bing's got it. First down. Trying to cut back for some yardage. He'll get forward progress to the 38. That's a 12-yard gain. And now Maurice Bing is beginning to get into the storyline. Well, they're beginning to find him coming across the middle. A lot of times your linebackers in an option are so worried about going up and down the line of scrimmage they don't get as much of a drop. You can see right there linebackers rushing in thinking option. That's going to open up the in between the safeties and where the linebackers should be. Bing's getting into that zone. But nothing wrong with the way Kenny Robinson delivered that pass. He put it right between the eight and the four. <laughs> Pitch back. Ball's on the turf. Citadel's got it. That's Lance Gray. That's the one thing you didn't want to have happen if you're a Georgia Southern fan. You can't turn the football over right now. That just fuels the Citadel fire. First turnover of the day. You see the pitch. It might be a hair behind Joyner, and it is. But he, he kind of looked away from it and then didn't get back on it in time. Citadel right there to get it. Gray very aggressively was able to get that football away from Joyner and a very concerned Frank Elwood watching what could be the last play of the third quarter. That's Jackson. To the two-yard line, a 32-yard gain. It's first and goal. You know, he's getting into that zone now. He's going to go back to the huddle and say, give me the football. I'm going to score. He just exploded through some tacklers to get down the sideline. And we have come to the end of what has been a very explosive third quarter of action. Look at him. He just stays on his feet. Doesn't want to go down. Doesn't want to go down. 
We're heading to the fourth from Ruckus. Johnson Hay, good stadium, the Citadel by a point. You. Citadel 21, Georgia Southern 20 as we begin the fourth quarter. Along with Chip Tarkington and Ted Byrne, Dave Weekly and Johnson. Haygood Stadium, Charleston, South Carolina. What a terrific setting for this Southern Conference game on Sports South. We're glad you're with us. The Citadel Bulldogs have turned things around. They trailed 14-7 at the half. Now have the football first and goal at the two-yard line to begin the fourth and final period. Myers under center. Full house backfield. And that's a big time defensive play for Georgia Southern, Derek Reeves. We talked about penetration in the backfield. Penetration will kill an option. That is exactly what Georgia Southern did. They needed a huge play. Look at this, out of nowhere. Boom, get through the block. Just keep driving till you, there's nowhere for them to go. There's nowhere to go. Myers grabbed a hold. Reeves grabbed a hold of Myers and waited until help arrived. And now the Citadel wants to talk things over. They've called a timeout. We've got a, a timeout on the field. We'll step aside momentarily and return to Charleston in a moment. All right, following a timeout by the Citadel Bulldogs, the Citadel will step back up to the line of scrimmage. It's second down and goal from the 10. A big defensive play just moments ago by Derek Reeves. An eight-yard loss. Derek Green, the leading receiver for the Bulldogs, is split out wide to the right. They'll operate from the eye. This is Spuel, touchdown. to the bread and butter. Spruill, the leading rusher on the team. We haven't heard a lot from him today, really, but here we do. He makes a nice cutback, runs right by. The pursuit gets into the end zone from 10 yards out. That's a huge touchdown right now. Kenyatta Spruill, the junior from Ritter, South Carolina, goes virtually untouched. 10 yards for the touchdown. The point after is good. The Citadel Bulldogs have their largest lead of the afternoon at 28 to 20. Still a lifetime to go in this game, an entire fourth quarter to play, 14-26. But Chip, there's no question, the, the momentum of this game has turned on a dime. Oh, has it ever. I mean, all of a sudden, Jackson has just gone bonkers for them, made some huge plays, and you're sitting here with an eight-point lead. You got the crowd going, the stadium is rocking, people are jumping up and down, they got cheerleaders climbing. This is what you want to do if you're the home team. Let's take another look at a touchdown from the other end zone. You see, there it is. All that is is great open field run and just get, get him in the end zone. That's why he's a leading rusher on the team. Georgia Southern right now, though, like you said, plenty of time. There's no, no reason to panic if you're Georgia Southern. You just got to get down the field. You can look at this a couple of ways. Either you got to score twice or you got to get the touchdown to get the two-point conversion. Three plays, 34 yards, 46 seconds on the drive after the fumble. You just can't afford to fumble again. It's amazing how many times fumbles, turnovers, interceptions turn a football game. This game was almost dead even until we get the big turnover. We said it when Georgia Southern got the football, they couldn't afford a turnover. They have a turnover. Citadel capitalizes, and now they got an eight-point lead. Well, if you're watching the blue-clad Bulldogs of the Citadel and saying, how can these guys be two and four, taking into consideration that their three-game losing streak came against teams all ranked in the top 25. They're playing very, very well. But by no means is Georgia Southern out of this football game. Speaking of which, Travis Taylor. Taylor is hog-tied to the ground. 
down by Kevin Smith, but not before a fine kickoff return. And the Eagles have good field position as they try to silence this raucous crowd at Johnson Haygood and get right back in the ball game. Take a look. He's got a hole coming up where he could go if he went left, but he went right, so he made a lot longer run probably. Mike could have picked up some more yardage going the other way. He ran about 50 yards instead of running about 30 yards, but it's easier said from up here than it is on the field. That's a real good comment. He did have a wide open lane and decided not to take it. Robinson, and they string it out and drag him down. Stupendous. Lorenzo Jackson left the field momentarily with an injury. He's back and making his presence felt. The Citadel on defense now is staying outside with the pitch man, and they're trying to get their linebackers to catch up to Robinson, the quarterback. Watch this. Here's a linebacker. He's going to make the play, but you see, there's our guy, <laughs> our corner, 23. That's uh, Corey Harris, who's been out there all day, was with a pitch man. They want Robinson to run the football. A gain of one, second and nine. The ball at the 30. Robinson this time rolling right, stopping, firing the pass in and out of the hands of his intended receiver, Cunningham, up at the 45-yard line. Would have been a first down. I tell you, Benny was going all the way across the field, though, trying to run with Robinson. If, if he would have been able to stop, he would have made the catch, but he was still moving the ball just a smidgen behind him, and he couldn't haul it in. It would have been a good catch. Wasn't a bad pass. Just one of those plays that would have been a good play by both people had it worked. Now, this is the kind of situation you don't want to be in if you're Georgia Southern looking at other scores. How about that? Alabama, two touchdown underdogs leading the Tennessee Vols in the fourth. Mm. Robinson, straight back. Protection is good. Guns it, incomplete. Tried to get it to Rico Tut, and the Eagles are going to have to punt the football. And the Citadel fans applaud their defense and their effort. Well, once again, we mentioned you don't want third and longs. They were in a third and just about 10 situation for a team that runs the ball most of the time. You're in a situation you're not used to being in. It's not something you're comfortable with. Kenny Warov on to punt. This one's going to turn over. And that's driving Frank all the way back to the 22-yard line, trying to get outside. Gets past the initial wave and takes it up to the 34-yard line. That's a good punt return. So the Citadel Bulldogs currently holding the largest lead of the game for Citadel at eight points, 28 to 20, 13, 10 to go in the game, and they've got the ball back. But it's no time to relax by no, any stretch sir. of the imagination. Frank had that kickoff return. He th he's thinking, hey, I, I, maybe I'm going to punt return, too. He really He's turning the juice on when he gets to the sides now. Stanley Myers in at quarterback. We saw P.J. Stewart briefly in the first half, but it's been all Myers here in the second. Myers on the option. Late pitch. Got it to Jackson. Whoa, what a dangerous pitch that was. He's close to the first down. Don Powers just had a heart attack during the game watching that. You would not want your quarterback to do it when you got an eight-point lead in the fourth quarter. Hang on to the football. It turned out to be a good play for the Citadel. They go real close to a first down, but uh-uh, don't do that again. <laughs> Myers was going down and suddenly decided, Dion, you take it. They flipped it to Jackson. There it is again. Now, he's grabbed. He's in the grasp. Oh, oh man. man, no, sir. <laughs> Woo. Second and less than a yard. Sproul has the first down, and he has forward progress to the 46-yard line. So the Bulldogs have the first down. Clock continues to run. Bulldogs continue to move. You know, you kind of get in the mindset there was a quarterback running an option play. You keep thinking, well, if I can get into the pitch man at the very last second, then we can bust a big one. Yeah, sometimes it works. Yeah, sometimes it works. <laughs> well, Georgia Southern's defense needs a big stop. They need a big play. They need to cause a turnover. Citadel hadn't had a turnover all day long. First down and 10 for the Bulldogs at the 45-yard line. And it's Spruill again. And he'll take it up to the 47. That's a gain of two. Second down and eight. Still to come this year for the Citadel next week. Look out. Going to Huntington to take on the Marshall Thundering Herd. Then back home on November the 9th to host UTC. Then they'll go to Lexington, Virginia on the 16th to take on VMI in the annual military classic of the South, the battle for the Silver Shaco. And you'll see that game right here on Sports South. Second down and seven. 
I was going to say, VMI surprisingly has struggled this year. A lot of folks thought they'd be a lot better football team. Yeah, it looked good last week, though, winning at UT City. Here comes Stanley Myers reversing his field. He's into Georgia Southern Territory near a first down at the Eagle 45. And that wasn't called for. That's just a great athletic move there by Myers. And it's not a bad idea. You, you're so used to, the defense is so used to pursuing, pursuing, pursuing. And sometimes when you go back against the grain, go back the other way, well, nobody's home. And that's kind of what happened this time. He made a nice play. Almost, almost getting the first down. Mark Parson, the tight end, brings the play in from the sidelines. The handoff up the middle. That's a first down. And the carry, Antonio Smith. First look at the sophomore running back. Well, that's a little surprise, too. I mean, you're thinking, you know, you're, you're getting hit with Sproul, hit with Sproul, hit with Sproul. Well, run Sproul one way and hand off back the other way. That's kind of a surprise. Good call there. Yeah. First and 10 from the dog. And you can see how the Bulldogs continue to shuttle personnel in and out. Trying to keep their players fresh as we close in on the 10 minute mark in the fourth quarter. Citadel leads by eight, 28 to 20. Georgia Southern's won two out of their last three. The Bulldogs have lost three straight. Trying to snap that losing streak here at home. Again, the fullback down to the 39 yard line. And that's Corey Brown. So back-to-back -back carries by new faces here for the Bulldogs on this drive, a critical drive in the fourth. Interesting. Sproul's on the sidelines. I, I see him. He, had his head, his head, he has his headgear off, but it looks like maybe an ear pad came off or something because he's got the helmet back on. Great look at the bridge. All roads lead into Johnson Haygood today. Myers, late pitch. Jackson. Is driven out of bounds. Edward Thomas, the senior linebacker, takes him out. Georgia Southern's really coming with backside pursuit, heavy backside pursuit. Uh, they've, they've done that the last four or five times. You watch as you see this, see this play here, and you'll see as Myers is going down the line, look at backside pursuit. Tell you what, if the coaches from the Citadel see that, you'll see something coming, a reverse or something coming back, and it may be wide open. It's a big play for the Georgia Southern defense. It's third down and five at the 37-yard line. Eagles trail by eight. Here's the handoff to Jackson, and Jackson's got the first down. Breaking tackles, takes it to the 28. That's a gain of nine, and the drive stays alive. Well, that's just that's just good, good blocking by the line of scrimmage and good blocking by the fullback. They just were not going to go down. They were going to keep pushing and keep pushing, and Jackson, he just bowled, bowled forward and kept going with it. Sproul with a good block out here. Oh, he just he leveled his man. And big Alvin Brown, the offensive guard, went limping off the field. So there'll be some new faces in that offensive line. Uh, Brown receiving attention right now. First down and 10. And here's the handoff to Jackson. And Jackson follows his blockers down to the 25-yard line. And the Bulldogs continue to move the football, and they continue to burn the clock. And they're also not running as much option as we yeah. were seeing earlier. You notice now we're running out of that eye formation. We're handing the ball to the tailback a lot. Now, Georgia Southern, if you're Georgia Southern, you say, hey, we need a big play right now. We got to make something happen. The clock is beginning to become a factor as we approach the eight-minute eight, eight mark. We can't afford to let anything else happen. That's what you're saying is Georgia Southern, folks. Yeah, Georgia Southern, they're averaging 280 ground yards per game, but they really don't have that quick strike ability that you need at this point of the ball game. Here comes Jackson inside the 20. Looks like he's got another first down. He does. He's to the 16. Another good looking play. Oh, we've seen some good running backs today. Really have. Now what I mean by not really option football this is a pretty safe option. Did you see the distance between Jackson and Stewart? Very close. They've cut down on their spreads between the running back and the quarterback. That wasn't a dangerous pitch. Out of the eye this time. The handoff goes right up the middle to the fullback. There's a fumble on the play, and the Eagles have recovered. 
The Eagles have recovered the football. It's Eric Thigpen, the strong safety, the senior from Fort Walton Beach. And coughing up the football, Nick Carmichael. Big time play for Georgia Southern. They still trail by eight. Citadel 28, Georgia Southern 20. Inside of eight minutes to go, Eric Thigpen comes up with a big fumble recovery for the Eagles to stop a Citadel drive. And here's another look. Well, we mentioned no turnovers by the Citadel, but in comes freshman Nick Carmichael. He hadn't run the football all day. He turns it over. But we'd mentioned a lot of different people coming in and out of the game in the running back position. They cough it up. Georgia Southern got a lot of green, though, before they can get in the end zone. Robinson. The pitch outside. Good running room across the 30. That's Steverson. Tobias Steverson takes it up the field, and he's knocked out at the 31-yard line. That's a gain of 18. And once again, if the cornerback is knocked down, and this is exactly what happens, they're running the option. The cornerback will just be cleaned back to the inside, and there's the shoot. If you can get to the outside with the option play, you can run, and that is exactly what happened. Great pursuit by the linebackers there from the Citadel. A great block by Corey Joyner on the corner. First and 10. Up the middle. That's Roderick Russell, who's had a, a career day, and he takes it to the 36-yard line. That's a gain of four, second down and six. Now, obviously, with Citadel leading by eight, if you're Georgia Southern, you're thinking control the clock, score, go for two, yep. and we would have overtime. Getting a good look at number 34, Lorenzo Jackson. He has made the last two plays for the Citadel defense. He makes the great play on the option. He makes the play straight ahead there. That young man has had a great game at linebacker. Lots of movement, and Russell moving his way up the field. Takes it all the way down to the Bulldog 48-yard line. That's a gain of 16. He is a load. So Russell closing in on 200 yards rushing today. You can always tell the guys that have really rushed when, you, when you're the away team and you're in all white because he's going to be in all dirt before the day's <laughs> over with. Look at this. Right at it. The fold block again. And then it's just and they're just saying, here, we're going to hand you the ball, Roderick. You pick your hole and go. 214 yards. Wow. What a day. Just the second player in Georgia Southern history to pass the 200-yard mark in a game. Robinson down the middle of the field. Wide open is Joyner, and he dropped the football. Uh, tried to run before he hauled it in. Boy, he'll have nightmares about that one tonight. Wide open. Georgia Southern set that play up so well. He started out in that right slot back position. The slot backs in this formation here have to be able to do so many things. Run, block, and catch. And look at this. Robinson hits him right in the hands. He looked wow. away. Oh. Oh, he won't want to talk about that. Stops the Don't clock. show that on the film next week. <laughs> clock stop, 6.38 to go. Second down and 10 from the 49-yard line. The pitch, Steverson sidesteps one tackler. First down, still going. Knocked out of bounds, 34-yard line. 15 more. And now you see the momentum swinging back, the pendulum going back to the Eagles. Well, Georgia Southern is getting the blocks on the corners. And I know we beat a dead horse in the ground here, but we're going to keep beating it. Joiner with a block here. Yeah, he drops the pass a minute ago, makes a good block. and kind of used the left hand maybe a little there, but that's all right. And then Steverson's going to make a nice run. And Georgia Southern's in business inside the 35. Bulldog fans trying to make some noise, getting behind their defense. Georgia Southern has the football, trailing by eight, getting late in the fourth. Russell, flag down. Russell breaking to the outside, fighting his way down to the 15, but this one is probably coming back. He's got to come back. Got two backs in motion. Got both slot backs moving. And the referee saw that. Frank Elwood said, well, dead burn it. We had it going. And they're going to take a five-yard penalty out of that. Once again, I want to mention this. The slot backs in, in this formation, this flex bone, have to be able to do so much. They've got to be able to block. They've got to be able to run. They've got to be able to catch. They're the guys in motion all the time. This can happen in this offense because you got you got so much motion and movement going on. Illegal motion, offense, first down. 
He did a nice job of saying what we just said. Yeah, he did. First and 15 now from the 38. Still plenty of time to go in the game. More than six minutes to go. Georgia Southern led this game 14-7 at the half. And then the Citadel Bulldogs have come storming back in front of their home fans here at Johnson Haygood in Charleston, South Carolina. Boy, they're getting their money's worth today. Oh, they certainly are. Robinson. And the rush is on. And it's a second sack for Belcher on the day. And I don't know if we've got this from the end zone camera. I hope we do. We'll know in just a second. They were going to run the exact same play that they ran a couple of moments ago that was dropped. Steverson here, 11, is going right into the same place that Joyner was going a moment ago, and he was open. They see that that play is open. Don't be surprised if they don't go back to that play. Georgia Southern, after driving deep into Bulldog territory, going the wrong way, at least for now. Second and 17, the line of scrimmage now the 41. And again, it's Russell. Squeezes out everything he can, getting close to the original line of scrimmage. At the 34, it'll be third and 10. We mentioned this earlier in the game, and we're going to kind of jump ahead. If they get into a fourth down situation, Georgia Southern has converted 10 of 19 this year. That could be a big factor. These guys probably think they can convert if they get into that situation. Don't be surprised if this play, they're looking at, hey, let's try to get half of it or a little more, and then we'll convert. That's a good point. Both these teams like onside kicks, too. They recovered one apiece last week. Ball's on the ground. Robinson picked it up. Let's it go in and out of the hands of Maurice Bing at the 21. It would have been a first down. Originally, I think they wanted him to, to hook up a little earlier, but with the pressure that was on Robinson, they had to keep running routes. They had to keep trying to get open. See all the pressure here? There's a lot of movement going on. This play developed a little slower than they wanted it to. Pretty good throw, though. Almost. Oh. Big play coming up. They are obviously going for it on fourth down and 10 from the 35 yard line. 4.47 to go in the game. And now the Bulldog fans come to their feet. If you got a play, it's you've been hiding all day. Now's when you run it. Four wide receivers. Robinson will operate from the shotgun. Flags are down. And another flag comes flying in late. Grant Chesnut, after the whistle, took a shot at one of the Bulldog players. Michael Penley. We may have an officials huddle up here to discuss everything that went on. We got flags flying all kind of different ways. And we may have a player ejected. And we do. Yeah, Grant Chestnut's been ejected from the game. And we're gonna show it to you again. They stopped the play because of the motion. Now watch the upper part of your screen. Here it comes. That looks like a head slap to me. Yeah. They don't allow that. Before the snap, false start. Still fourth down. That may be more frustration than anything else. Now you got now you got the question here. You got fourth and forever. You got a punt here, don't you? You don't have any choice, I don't think. I think you got a punt. Hope your defense can hold them and then try to get the football back. There's still 4.45 yeah. to go. You got all your timeouts left. Here comes you the punt team. You got to kick it. Now Frank Elwood runs a punt team on the field. Georgia Southern is going to punt the football. So that Bulldog defense holds. Well, you hate it for that young man getting the ejection. Yeah. You really hate that for him. Because you know if he had it to do all over again, he wouldn't do it. Yeah, it's unfortunate. War Rob's in the game to punt it. So if you're Georgia Southern, you've got to put the emphasis on the defense now. I 
you got a fake punt. <laughs> oh, and they nearly get the block. But look at this. Good kick. We'll step aside momentarily when we return to Johnson Haygood Stadium. The Citadel Bulldogs will have the football. The Bulldogs have come storming from behind to build an eight point lead. Now the Georgia Southern defense hoping to hold the Bulldogs to three and out and get that football back. Stanley Myers. Crosses the 15, takes it up to the 17-yard line. It's a gain of nearly four. Clock is running. Second down and a short seven. Now, if you're the Citadel, you got to hold on to that football. you got to avoid turnovers at any cost. I don't think you'll see a lot of pitching of the football unless the relationship between a running back and a quarterback is awfully close. is the lone wide receiver split out wide to the right. The handoff goes right up the middle. It's a first down and much, much more. Kenyatta Spruill, who already has a touchdown run, carried about half of the Georgia Southern secondary to the 42-yard line. Huge play. Huge play for a couple of reasons. First, it's a big first down. It really gets the Citadel out of a hole. But the next thing that it does is even if they go three and out, when they punch, it's going to put Georgia Southern in deep, deep in their own territory. Oh, look at him hanging on to that football. He's, he's carrying half the team with him. I can't get him down. Kenyatta Spruill with a big-time run. Boy, Spruill, and, Spruill is, is he's, a, he's a horse, too. He and Russell, uh, Russell are just horses. All right, a little mix-up on the play call, and they are not going to get the play off. Myers with a heads-up play called a timeout with one second left on the play clock so they did not lose five yards chip they're in a critical position right here the bulldogs are essentially one first down away from possibly running out the clock in this game yeah you got to remember georgia southern still got all of their timeouts yeah. well two of their timeouts they've already called one here in the second half so georgia southern definitely wants to stop the clock the central definitely wants to keep the clock running but you know after you have that big gain by Sproul, you might need the timeout to kind of set everything everything up for what you want to do. You can talk about your whole next three plays coming up right now. Probably a good timeout, even though the clock was about to run. It wouldn't make any difference. Probably a good timeout. Yes, yeah, Sproul with a big time run gives the Citadel Bulldogs a first down at the 42 yard line, gets them out from the shadow of their own end zone. So even if Citadel has to punt the football back to Georgia Southern, you're forcing the Eagles to drive the length of the field. A long way, and, and they may have to take some timeouts between now and then. Regardless, if they don't take time out, you're going to probably not get the ball back with any more than about a minute and a half to a minute 45 to go into the game. You know, you look at this game, how well it's been played by these two teams, and consider where these teams are in the standings of the Southern Conference. <laughs> what does that say about the overall strength of this league? I'll tell you what, it's, it's loaded for Bear again this year. Following the timeout, the handoff goes right up the middle. And that is a strong carry. That's Antonio Smith, the running back. And he is into Eagle territory at the 40-yard line. That's a gain of 18. Well, you know, they only used him a couple of times today, but both times when he's carried the football, he's been the off back from Spruill. Kind of changing it up, and he's made some good runs. This is a huge run right here. Once again, it's just a different look with that power eye. Yeah, Don Powers has done a good job getting some of those fresh legs in the game. Myers will not pitch, and he'll take it to the 39-yard line. He squeezed out a gain of one, and maybe more importantly, the clock continued to run until Georgia Southern opted to burn a timeout here. Well, you also notice the smart thing that he did. Not only did he not make the pitch, but Myers comes outside, and he, he's not going anywhere near the out-of-bound markers. He's staying inbound, so the clock can run and force Georgia Southern to call a timeout. That is a veteran move. 2.46 to go in the game. Citadel 28, Georgia Southern 20. And, you know, if you're Frank Elwood, you got to be thinking about the big lead that the Eagles blew at home last week in Statesboro to Appalachian. They led this game at halftime, led for the majority of the ball game. Now they need 
some help to try to even tie it. Well, let's play devil's advocate a little more on that. The two field goals, they could have made yes. either one or could have hit both of them. Had they hit both of those field goals and both of them had good chances to go through, then a field goal wins it for you. Yeah. And what about the missed extra point? Yeah, there's a lot of ifs and buts you could do, but lots of this football game has been some, some big plays. Citadel right now is obviously thinking, hey, we get another first down, it's, it's, you know, it's time to celebrate. Back to the line of scrimmage now for the blue-clad Bulldogs of the Citadel from the 40-yard line of Georgia Southern. And the handoff goes to Spruill, and Spruill gets forward progress to the 37-yard line, and now Georgia Southern will burn another timeout. Now here's an interesting situation. It's going to be third down. If the Citadel does not convert, they'll just stand and let the clock run for the 25 seconds. So you're going to burn off another 30 to 40 seconds easily before the punt's ever made. You're going to get the ball back possibly, like we said, about a minute 30 to a minute 45. And who knows how far you're going to have to drive. If you're Don Powers in this situation, I would not hesitate to throw the football because you've really put yourself in a position of if you can make things happen on this play, you're almost guaranteed to win the game. Yeah, I th and I think that's what he's probably thinking. The other thing he's also thinking as well is if he keeps the ball on the ground, they don't have another timeout. Yeah. They can let more clock run. He may opt for the clock option rather than the first down option and say, hey, my defense has played pretty good in the second half. All right, fine. If they got to drive 75, 80, 85, 90 yards, beat me that way. Well, we've got a very interesting game going now. Citadel trying to close this thing out in their losing streak. And deep we mentioned thinking it going on now. Huh? Deep thinking yeah, going deep on now. Thinking. Well, another thing that might be in the minds of some of the fans watching in Statesboro, they're not used to losing seasons. The Eagles lose this game. They're going to be three and five. Myers, play action. Will throw. situation whether he could throw it or run it Myers threw it look there are a couple of people down here who could have could have he could have thrown it too and he gets in the end zone for a touchdown what a great great call by the Citadel coaching staff the big time catch by the tight end George Hampton Myers to Hampton for the touchdown it's 35 20 Charleston, South Carolina. I really like the call, though, David. I mean, I really like the days ago here and let Georgia Southern run back a kickoff. Then they could cut the lead back to seven or eight. And then, you know, the onside kick and some other yeah. things could play into everything. You got to be careful not to get too overconfident or relax right now. Skinner sends it down the field. Earthwind. Earthwind has got it. Earthwind Moreland takes the kickoff back to the 26 yard line. Greatest so name maybe in all of college football. It's definitely one of the best names in the Southern Conference, that's for sure. 222 now on the clock. George Southern needs two scores. They trail by 15. Citadel. They had the scoreboard humming today. 35 points. Their previous high in points, 28 against Western Carolina. New quarterback, Russell. Same old Russell, though. New quarterback. And you got no timeouts. This is something that Georgia Southern doesn't do a lot. Run this hurry up offense. Be interesting to see how they do. 
inside of two minutes now in the game. And Greg Hill subbing for Robinson. We saw Hill briefly in the first half. Hill with the good arm, Maurice Bing with the reception at the Bulldog, 43. Now the clock stops long enough to move the chains. And you can definitely throw it, there's no question. Is the Citadel in the dreaded prevent? <laughs> I don't know if they're in the preview, but they're definitely playing too deep and way deep. <laughs> Clock starting again. Hill out of the shotgun. Pass caught. Russell in the middle of the field, so the clock is going to continue to run. Yeah, you can't have a lot of those. And the Bulldogs have an injured player back behind the line of scrimmage, and that's going to stop the clock. And that's the last thing the Citadel wanted to do in that situation. That's Eric Capers, a senior defensive end from Lake City, South Carolina, and he is going to make it off the field under his own power. It's been a long, hard-fought game for both of these teams. What a well-played game. Yes, very well-played. Very well-played game. You see the game story, and the ball just goes by Hill. What did we say about well played? Oh. Hill was not expecting the snap. Wasn't looking. That's pretty obvious. Wasn't looking at all. Well, that can happen. Once again, they're in a hurry up offense. They don't run it a whole lot. They don't have to throw a whole lot in this kind of situation where they're just trying to get it. Look, he's not even looking. The ball snapped while he's looking down. He didn't even know the ball had snapped. And alertly, the Citadel gets on the football. Lance Gray makes the recovery. And so with just a minute 17 to go, it's going to be a big night for that Bulldog. <laughs> He's ready to celebrate with a little Alpo, probably. Hand off right up the middle. He might get staked tonight. He might. He deserves it. He's had a long, long day. He's made a lot of laps around the stadium. I don't know if folks notice that. He's made a lot of laps today. And now the fans begin to head for the exits as the Citadel smells the victory. With the win, the Bulldogs will up their season record to three and four overall, two and three in the Southern Conference. The Eagles of Georgia Southern will drop to three and five, two and four in the Southern Conference. It's really hurt Georgia Southern coming into the game. They had an outside chance to get into the playoffs. It was an outside chance, but they did. This game will pretty much end that possibility. Now they've got to concentrate on trying to keep that streak alive of winning seasons. They've had 13 consecutive winning seasons. What a great tradition they've had going back to the days of Irk Russell. Well, the crowd here really appreciates the play today, and they should. Don Powers, his staff, and the whole Bulldog team has done a great job. Outstanding second half. The Citadel Bulldogs win the game, defeating the Eagles of Georgia Southern, 35-20. And the Bulldogs win in Southern Conference action tonight. They defeat the Eagles of Georgia Southern. The final 35 to 20 and end their three game losing streak. And Georgia Southern still winless here in Charleston. All right, Chip Tarkington enjoyed it. Our thanks to Ted Byrne as well. From Charleston, South Carolina, Dave Weekly saying so long. Our final score, 35-20, the Citadel over Georgia Southern. Good night, everybody.